welcome everybody um, to our next iteration of the AQVC Insights webinar. Uh, this time again with one of our fantastic uh, portfolio funds. Um, with me today from our team is Alena, our investment manager. Um, she's going to talk a bit about um, our investment into Signature and our process. And obviously, uh, we have also with us Juliane, uh, founding partner of Signature. Um, so big round of applause. Um, <laughs> and happy you guys are here. Um, I don't know, Juliane, you want to um, maybe uh, kick it off and and tell us a bit about, about you just very, very briefly, and then we'll dive into, into questions. Sure. Thanks for having me. I'm also very thrilled to be here on a webinar with you guys. Um, we have kicked off a great relationship already. I'm super excited to doing this together today. So um, a few words um, just about me. Like I'm um, untypically and somehow typically for VC, I'm, I'm a lawyer. So um, I originally also worked as a lawyer at a big, big uh, transaction law firm and uh, then discovered my passion for entrepreneurship and uh, tech innovation early on during my studies already. Um, I was a very young mother, so I didn't have, uh, I thought I didn't have a lot of a choice, but, you know, pulling it through to the end and then also working as a lawyer in the beginning, but somehow um, for good reasons, it always like um, dragged me out of uh, the pure job and um, more into entrepreneurship and investing. So headed and uh, ran to um, bigger investment branches of, of large corporates and then discovered my passion for blockchain or distributed ledger technology to be precise and decentralization. And uh, yeah, figured out that there's a great opportunity, picked that off and now we're here. Nice, fantastic. So <laughs> handing over to Alena, maybe also a quick, uh, quick intro from your side. Yes, um, very happy to be here today and to host, co-host kind of our uh, next um, session with our portfolio funds. I always enjoy that a lot and also posing some questions, um, not only from us, but also from the audience. So if you have any questions, feel free to uh, write them in the chat. Um, quick intro from my end, I'm AQBC's investment manager um, and co-led the investment in uh, Signature Ventures. Um, Julian and I have met last year during a female-founded or female-led event, uh, but the relationship goes a bit further back also with our founders. Uh, developed conviction quite fast. And as you all know, we are investing very thesis-driven around uh, various mega trends, one of them being Web3. And uh, in the space, we really identified Signature Ventures as a um, kind of traditional VC fund that moves in the very dynamic field of, of blockchain and, and Web3. We're going to hear more about that now. Um, and with that, uh, in a first time setup, um, getting really meaningful allocations in portfolio companies and also attracting really international tier one co-investors and follow on investors. So, um, Juliana, let's maybe jump right in. Um, maybe and maybe let's kick it off with a bit more background to the whole space of uh, distributed ledger technology. So uh, what, made you, what made you focus um, on this space and uh, how did you came up with Signature Ventures in the first place? And maybe also tell us a bit more about your team setup and structure. Sure, so I think the simple answer is what got me there is pure excitement. Um, in my former jobs, I had a lot to do with like corporate mentoring, but also with the traditional general VCs and um, the entrepreneurial side of things. So I had a pretty holistic and good overview over the entire space. And uh, during that period, I also discovered for myself um, blockchain as uh, the evolution of the internet, basically. And um, I had, <laughs> which is like uh, probably not a uh, yeah, what everybody would assume, but I had a, a private interest in cryptography before already. So I had read a bit about cryptography and also did some banking compliance in my former job as a lawyer. So I think I had a basic understanding back then what some issues were um, with, uh, yeah, for, for example, related to privacy uh, and centralization. 
and also in the financial industry. So uh, I was very much aware also of the issue with intermediaries. And at some point in time, I had followed Bitcoin around since 2014, roundabout already. But at some point, I uh, read more about the technology behind it. And when I did that, somehow I was completely excited when I figured out that this is a real paradigm shift. And um, as some say, like to have a great founder myth is very important. Um, and it sounds always like very, you know, marketing story like, but it was really a point in time, like the most exciting point in my professional career when I discovered that for myself. And I couldn't stop thinking about it. Like I had to read about it. I started to apply for a so-called blockchain um, accelerated where like we shared research. Um, and yeah, then um, around, uh, I would say all around this um, experience that I had from working with different kind of investors and seeing the challenges on all sides, um, I developed this idea to, to build a fund in with that specific focus. There was not a lot of knowledge about it or around it. And I was pretty sure that many would miss out on it because it's not an easy thing to discover um, great startups in this or projects in the space. You have to really deep dive into the community. And this is exactly what I did. And that's also how I met Yuri. So he's the technical person or the most technical person in the team. He um, is a data scientist and holds a PhD. And it's also a very research-driven person. So we are really complementary. And then we further build out a team um, with the spirit of having all kinds of, you know, different views on the space within our own team. Mm -hmm. And maybe being a bit more specific also towards your investment strategy. So what are the true pillars within this huge kind of space of, of DLT and blockchain that you really focus on and um, that are maybe spe especially interesting like at this very moment. Yeah, so this has always been like uh, the fundamental evolution of the space was also always our greatest interest. We are not interested in selling tulips or purchasing them and then selling them again. This is, the space is very, very noisy. We've always been uh, focus on the on the fundamentals and they are not to be honest they're not very sexy like it's just very nerdy stuff and <laughs> um and it's also you have to do a lot of research to get to them and also to understand them so um the portfolio basically the the, the overall thesis is we are an early stage investor that wants to invest really when the company valuations ideally are not even 10 million euro post money ideally um, we like to lead the rounds and we did that a lot of times now and like to also be actively involved. So this is like the, the overall basis of our investments. We are writing tickets up to um, a million, mostly in the yeah, area of 650 to 800 K because um, the very, very early rounds and we like to discover the startups as first investor. Um, are usually not that big and we like to add further great co-investors that add to us and to add to our experience in the round. So that is from the structural side and then from um, the, the topic side, our focus is first of all, the pure fundament, like really, for example, new protocols. And then we have um, an intersection that is called, we call like open finance and then um, a pillar that is early applications. And they're basically related to each other, but also guarantee that we have a great risk mitigation within the portfolio because uh, they are typically, for example, whether addressing multiple industries or for example, spe specifically um, stemming from one uh, very, yeah, um, fast growing industry like for example we had um the a, a topic in in the climate environment uh, carbon credit a topic for example um or molecule which is in the biotech space mm. yeah i think what what we are what we are seeing is that it's obviously a, a really horizontal right it's like it touches almost everything 
the traditional sectors, which makes obviously Web3 investing a little bit of a of an outlier as a bucket, right? It's a bit we are we've been discussing this also around uh, AI or even deep tech, which is not really a sector specifically because it's touching all kinds of different verticals. Um, so it would also interest me from Alena a little bit uh, because obviously when we invest into a fund, we are obviously investing 50-50 as a fund of fund in emerging managers on one hand, and you would classify as an emerging manager. And on the other hand, we also invest in established managers. Yeah? These established managers are very often access constraints. It's a lot about access, but they are also mostly generalists. Yeah, And so for us, it's always an interesting mix from a diversification standpoint to bring in specialists and generalists um, from these buckets and Web3 being one of the you know, core fundamental driving forces over the next decade. Um, I would be curious to hear from Alena a little bit what was our thesis and also what have you seen in the competitive landscape of Web3 funds and why you and the team also selected Signature to bring to the IC? Yeah, very good question. And I think uh, especially investments in the whole space of Web3 are, are still a bit controversially discussed. Uh, I mean, there were a few cases that led investors to back off, but uh, I'm very happy that we kind of um, looked at the space from a different angle uh, and, and took a different shot on it because uh, as you as you mentioned, I think it's a very fundamental um, shift that is happening in the space at the moment that will not only change like one specific industry, but like each and every industry. And um, one topic that uh, definitely like supported and drove the investment in signature ventures is that um, there was already a kind of underlying portfolio that um, we could analyze and some great use cases where we could really see the application of, of blockchain technology ranging from biotech to climate tech to fintech, uh, but also kind of to, to B2B enterprise tech um, that made it on the one hand side easier for us to understand the use cases, but also to show us how fundamental it really is um, and how good it also suits with the rest of our portfolio um, funds. I mean, um, there is a huge overlap with Web3 and climate, for example, at the moment. We see the first funds that are being created just in the space. Uh, good timing. Mm -hmm. We spoke to one this morning. Um, but even the more traditional climate tech funds are looking into Web3 companies. And that's just one example, right? Um, so in general, um, and just rounding this up on the competitive landscape, I think what we saw is definitely that most of the funds in the space are uh, super new to the market, um, that they've been founded in the last one to two years. And um, I would still say that many of them are following a hype and a trend and that they might not be too concentrated on, on, on their investment theses and uh, might also be a bit opportunistic um, as they're very there are a lot of high projects coming into the space and Juliana can probably tell like can ref reference like three hours about it. Um, but that's what uh, what we felt with Signature was different, um, that they're very like disciplined, concentrated, taking time for their due diligence, even though it is a even especially in the pre-seed and seed fields, uh, a very uh, dynamic and, and fast moving environment. Um, but uh, that was definitely one of the main reasons. and. Juliana, maybe with that, handing it over to you, uh, I would also like to give the audience the opportunity to understand one or two use cases a bit better from the portfolio. And we already talked about the intersection of, of Web3 and climate. Um, one more general question I, I, I would like to, you, to ask you is, what do you think in general of the space? How, how will it develop? How will blockchain play a uh, role into the, uh, in the in the whole climate tech space? And then uh, a bit more specifically, what does uh, Atom, one of your portfolio companies, do? Mm -hmm. So starting with Atom, for example, this is a very good example of um, when you take a deep dive uh, into a certain industry and see basically where the, um, or in a certain field of, I would say it's even like a, an entire challenge um, in a certain um, field that touches many industries. Here it's, it's carbon emission. Um, you find that there is natural necessity for this kind of tech stack. 
Um, why is that? So in the carbon credits um, market, for example, there's a lot of intransparency. There's like, it's it sounds hilarious, but the way it is partly handled is that you get a certificate that is basically in PDF and you move it to trash some when you consume it, like when you retire it is the correct term. So this is this is like outrageous, right? In in um in the uh, century we're in, and there, for example, the characteristics of distributed ledger technology come into play because it's open, transparent, and secure. So you can basically follow the issuance and the entire stack. Like when also when you, for example, sell it, because it will become a financial product or financial instrument at some point in time and then until it's basically burned or retired and um, we found that um, value proposition of including or combining these two topics very striking this is also a good example because what you mentioned uh, Stefan is very true some funds invest in also in the space invest vertically and we invest horizontal, uh, mm. horizontally so you can't do and this is also a reason for our i would say slower approach in investing is really that we need to take a very deep dive into these topics before we actually do an investment it's every time we are dealing with a, a bit of a different um, challenge and probably even another industry, while we're still um, leveraging on our expertise about the um, technology. And this is also, by the way, why we like to add co-investors that then have an expertise in this particular field that we are investing in. This is exactly why we um, like to make room uh, for great co-investors. And um, those teams have very similar challenges reaching from one industry that is basically revolution, uh, revolutionized probably, or even like the financial industry, or just benefits from this socioeconomic changes that this new technology brings to the industry. And there the problems are sometimes quite similar. This is exactly where we then can add our value and help those teams um, to yeah, basically copy paste from the experience from other teams. Mm. No, that's um... exactly why it takes so much time and effort also to really make a decision and also to source these status because you want to work with, of course, the best possible player out there. Yeah, I think what you, what you're saying is super true, right? It's taking time, especially in an industry that is kind of what Alena also mentioned, known a little bit for hype, for for mm. also you have some, you know, bad apples, unfortunately, in the in the Web3 space. I think it's super important to actually go and take the time and look at the founders and work with them, get to know them and their, their projects. Um, but one other question I had was, you know, in regards to taking time, a little bit about your own fundraising and your own sort of journey in that in that in that very kind of today's market, which obviously isn't necessarily driven by hype to venture capital, more like uncertainty. There's everybody is is interested. Every it's like a pool, right? Everybody is standing in front of the pool, but nobody was the first one to jump in <laughs> a little bit there. Yeah? So um, <laughs> maybe tell us a bit about your journey there. I, I think your your final fi final close is done, right? So. We are currently actually uh, in the on the last meter. So we are right now, today and tomorrow, onboarding the very last investors. And we have our final closing on the 30th of April. So Friday will be uh, the big day for us because uh, the 30th is a Sunday. Um, so if there's any interest, they really need to call me today. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's really... It's a it's a actually a great question because I think most people are not very honest about the process. For an emerging manager to go out there and to have like a fundamentally new um, idea about the way of investing and also probably an edgy topic that is also then already burned by this entire discussion if Bitcoin is you know 
only for criminals you remember that i mean nowadays people are ashamed if they say something like that because it really shows how uninformed they are but this was the discussion um that we when we started um with a signature that we really had on a regular basis energy consumption of blockchains uh, mm -hmm. criminal behavior and all that stuff while it is fundamentally a privacy technology and it's exactly the opposite of what many said or thought it to be and that was a, a kind of a challenge in the beginning to be honest because we had to do a lot of education and then you are living through these cycles where then uh, somehow the market goes up and everybody suddenly gets interested and you can save yourself from requests and you know many people want to be um, educated more and you have to filter those out that you you want to work with on a long-term basis and we have been very selective also with uh, the investors we took on board um, and I think you are a great example of a fund of fund and also from the mindset of people we really want to work with and we like to work with because you have a really a large interest in how we're working and you're also very present and this is um if you then also are picky about the people you you want to work with uh, it becomes a, a pretty big challenge to get a fund full and i saw many failing on the way and we are more than lucky um that we we are where we are today i think what helped and this is also what i recommend to young funds is if you have a little bit of money, um, do small warehousing deals and start to show what you can do. Start to show that you have access and start to show that your investments are, have a great fundament. And we were also very lucky that the first picks we did have developed incredibly, really partly insanely. So also that brought us a lot of traction, but also... An, in all honesty, being a woman and telling people that you're going to start your own tech fund now, and you're originally a lawyer, um, is probably not <laughs> the easiest marketing story in the beginning. So what we did was we focused simply on the performance. We said, hey, let's take all the time in the world. And now we have the funny situation that we already did and are currently also again in the process of distributing and we're still getting new investors on board. So it's like, it's a kind of where two worlds are coming together here because usually that's of course not happening. Um, but we we had, um, like we really benefited from that approach. And I would say it was the only way that we could be successful with the fundraising. Yeah, no, I, I we hear this with a lot of, uh, managers right now especially emerging managers they are still it's 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 kind of crazy they're still the ones out there that really close fast that can be selective about their lps and you've been a great example there right i mean you um you, you did the right strategy and you did it super well so you could be selective you could um build up your portfolio and your performance i i guess speaks for itself we can talk about this in a bit um but maybe alena also from your side um what other advice would you give to emerging managers currently raising in this environment? Maybe not just focused on Web3, but in general, we see um, there's uh, there's really really now there's the separation from the mm -hmm. from the uh, good from the great. Yeah. Um, sorry. <laughs> sorry, I, I I just chip in my five cents, and then Juliana, happy to get your input as well. Um, I think first and foremost is being patient. Uh, don't get don't get too comfortable uh, when looking back at the last two years and the fundraising speed then, um, but really take time and be equipped to, um, yeah, to just be, um, be careful and patient with LPs uh, coming on board. Uh, one thing that I find super important is to also not only rely on high net worth individuals, former founders and small tickets, but also especially with first funds or second funds, try to get the first institutionals on board because they will be the ones that hopefully re-up in fund two and make your life easier then. And they are also a very credible kind of reference for every other LP that comes in in the future. Um, besides that, um, we see that more and more emerging managers, even though they have a very generalist 
investment focus, they try to specialize in either being super supportive, in being very hands on with their portfolio um, companies in ways that I haven't uh, heard of before. And Juliana, you are doing something similar. And uh, not only being um, of help when it comes to how to how to further develop the company, but also how to further develop the founders, how to help them uh, psychologically to become better leaders and so on. Um, I've seen the first funds that are super, super focused on that, uh, mm -hmm. that work uh, with a strong psychological angle. Um, and I think that's I personally find it super, super interesting. Uh, but yeah, Juliana, feel free to to add to it. It, it, this was exactly uh, um, what I think, Stefan, is the is the uh, one of the greatest pieces of advice to ask uh, fund of funds like you that have an overview because you know all the stories. This is, I think, the best thing you can do because in the beginning, you if you have not raised before, you're pretty much lost um, in the environment, and you also don't know what kind of investors to address. So, I mean, there you see with Alina's answer, um, this is like so insightful and the best source of information you can get. Yeah, yeah. Um, obviously, we are also uh, with our structure as an evergreen and as a stock corporation, we are always also raising ourselves. So, I mean, one big advantage of our structure is that investors can still get exposure to funds like Signature that already have closed, right? I think this is something that is um, also always uh, interesting, but it also means that we are also always fundraising, right? So we are kind of in between. <laughs> we get the nice uh, stories from the funds uh, who tell us what is what is working in their, uh, for, for, for their LPs. And it's usually a very specific type of LP that is relevant to them. And then we have also our own kind of specific target audience that uh, we are constantly working with. Um, so yeah, we are we are we are like in the in the I don't I don't know if we can beep this out, but in the shit sandwich a bit where you get the, <laughs> <laughs> both sides are, um, are, are, are troubling right now or are not so straightforward. No, um, I'm only joking, obviously. Um, but yeah, I think both of you are right, and this advice goes out uh, to to a lot of the managers trying to raise right now. Um, but I think one of the strengths that you guys had with Signature was your portfolio, right? So um, I don't know if we mentioned this in the beginning, maybe you wanna quickly talk about your fund size, how many portfolio mm -hmm. companies you have and how much you have invested. And then maybe you can talk about sort of some of the real outlier winners and uh, what excites you about them. Mm -hmm. So uh, portfolio fund size, I can, or the final fund size, I can tell you next week because there's still tickets coming in right now. Uh, roughly, um, you're you're below it, fifty million. That we can we can yes, say that exactly. Yeah. So you published it with thirty, and we will be in the range, like yeah. you know. Um, so uh, that will be the final fund size, and we um wanted, didn't want to grow larger than that because we have such an early stage approach, and we're very intensely caring for the startup. So there wouldn't be more room for us, you know, to take more companies in the portfolio. I think. Uh, we have like a lot of very, very interesting companies in the portfolio that I always get very excited about. Um, internationally, the most well-known one is for sure Celestia because they basically are the, um, the, the, the thought leader and um, opened up the entire um, yeah, new modular tech stack. So um, Celestia has been in the news all the time over the last one and a half years. And that is well justified because the team is excellent. Um, and what they do is fundamentally new and brilliant. Um, and then I think also very well known in the US, of course, is Unchained Capital. They just raised a 60 million round last week. So congratulations to them. They did an amazing job um, with uh, basically um, simplified with um, Bitcoin lending like lending and having bitcoin collateral while you do not compromise basically the self custody approach um with their multi sig walls and uh, they are introducing also fundamentally new products based on bitcoin that are really um an interesting 
financial instrument from all sides, also introducing um, IRA plans, so retirement plan plans mm. that have a tax benefit and all of that. Um, they do an amazing job as well. And in Germany, I think one of the most well-known currently is, of course, Finoa. And they um, also got their uh, licenses recently from BaFin. So it's uh, the go-to custodian. And they're basically an entry point, not only for the protocols, but also for all the institutionals that want to store and work with their, um, with their tokens and crypto assets. So also an amazing team and we're working closely with them. I'm very impressed of what they have achieved over the last years. I, I mean, we, we already talked about uh, value creation on the LP side, and um, I would also be super interested in what's your kind of special USP and pitch uh, to your founders and what mm -hmm. makes them um, in, in this very kind of competitive and from what I understood, a very international environment, uh, also choose you uh, as lead investors or even like um, smaller investors. Um, first of all, I mean, the ultimate question to be in touch with them is access, getting access. So if you're not competing, um, that's already a good thing if you don't even have to compete. So the first and uh, most important part is to really be there when nobody else is. And then um, to prove yourself that being a valuable partner and um, being the best choice is, I think, fundamental honesty, really being true about what you can do and what you can't do, and um, dedication. The most common mistakes when funds mature over time is that they get the managers kind of get saturated. They are not that, you know, hands-on anymore, but they have often have the knowledge and the experience. So basically the founders could get a lot of benefit from working with them, but they are not present. Sometimes also the portfolio is just too big. And for us, it's really like being there is super important, like being accessible, being responsible, um, listening and learning. Uh, they are the experts mostly. We have another expertise that we add to support them with uh, growing sustainably. But um, ultimately, we have to listen a lot of what they are telling and reading, what they are doing, and then um, trying to be as beneficial as we can. And um, I think this is like, and sometimes um, it, I have the feeling that also they value that we are, we consider ourselves founders as well. I mean, we have gone through nearly all the issues that every startup has to face. You have in the beginning, you have no processes, you have no money, you need to shape your product, you need to reinvent yourself constantly, you need to basically market yourself. Um, it's like there's so many challenges. So why should we be any different? I mean, this is something that I also miss a little bit in the space to stay humble and also, you know, um, not trying to 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 be um, to give them the feeling that you control their access to success. You're just one of many people that can give them money. And the good founders, you usually always somehow at some point in time you're competing with other great investors. Um, if there's no competition at all over time, should steer some thinking. So this is, I think, a very important and then also walk the talk. I mean, we um, salary wise, you know, incentive wise, we I just had the discussion with one of the founders we're currently in, uh, in negotiations with about, you know, the vesting, the founder vesting. And um, I disclosed my vesting schedule to her to, to show her that what we expect is not only market standard, but also we walk the talk. We do it ourselves. This is also, I think, very important. Um, mm. And then, of course, you know, constantly try to add value. And sometimes it's not working for some reason. And that's when you really have to think about why it's not working. Um, these uh, should be individual single cases 
probably because the company has advanced very far and they currently need another level of expertise in a specific um, field, for example. Um, but there should always be a good reason. And if it's a reason that uh, comes from you, like from your own expertise or from your behavior, you at least have to think about it and look in the mirror and ask yourself, how can I do it differently and be open for criticism? This is, you should, I mean, the, the ethics and culture you have in your own team should also, if it's a good one, and a, like you say, you have a good feedback culture, why shouldn't you be open to feedback from others too? I mean, also from our piece, for example. Um, that's, by the way, something I appreciated a lot um, while working with you because we have shared this culture of being very open with each other. And that just makes things so much easier. And remove all the hierarchies in the conversation. Maybe to kick off the final questions and uh, maybe quick quick answers on this, uh, Juliana, what's your vision for for Signature? Where do you want to take the firm over over the next hundred years? Right, I don't know. So for sure, Signature is um, the sum of its individual parts, and somehow the individual parts uh, will also change over time. For sure, we we get a lot of interest of people that want to to um, uh, join us. And I think that will fundamentally also influence the way that we are going. For us, there's a, some core principles. And uh, for example, one is we do not want to compromise on quality. We do want to work on fundamental, relevant uh, innovation. And that innovation needs to be beneficial to humanity. So if we are raising fund two at a certain point in time, I'm not even thinking about it today because Fund one is just about to be closed. Um, probably in, in 12 to 18 months, we'll see. But it might also change, like also the technology might change the way we do investments. And I don't want to formally commit to something that might not be mm. the best case scenario when we get there. Um, we will for sure uh, care for innovation. This is for sure. And um, this is also the, the entire team is very committed to that. One more, one more question from my end and also kind of linking back to the intro and also taking one step back and looking more um, to you as a private person, as a person in the VC ecosystem. Um, I know that we're both very dedicated to diversity, uh, especially when it comes to VCs, uh, when it comes to female founders, et cetera. So uh, what do you actively do to, to promote this matter in the ecosystem at the moment? Uh, I support actively a couple of projects that are um, educating female investors and also mentoring female founders just to, for example, bring them together, but also to help them to navigate around. Um, and because there is a similarity bias um, and uh, female investors tend to invest in diverse teams more often. So we try to um, yeah, go with the statistics there and basically build a fertile soil. Um, also to educate people about it, to rethink about bias. Um, everybody is biased and this is not a bad thing. It's just a matter of fact that I need to rethink if my first impulse is uh, fact-based or if it's uh, bias-based, and mm -hmm. which leads to better thinking. So I do most of the speeches in the in the field like i hope that someday it's not necessary anymore because it's also draining sometimes and it's a topic you don't want to necessarily be too associated with because it's also stigmatized but um to me i mean removing uh this like these biases or at least bringing them to the conscious level is one necessary step um, and of course, ourselves, I mean, you know, you have to talk, you have to do some mirror talk. Um, you have to consider how you're reviewing uh, pitches from diverse teams. You have to make sure that you are not um, driven by bias yourself. And that is also best um, measured with simple numbers um, and statistics. Yeah? Compare your output to statistics and see where you are and where you rank. Yeah. 
Um, 100%. I don't know, Alena, how we are in time. Did we have, um, I think we are over time already. We blocked um, 45 minutes, uh, but yes. I see all of our participants are still here. So thanks for that. <laughs> so um, thanks for that. Yeah. Thanks, thanks for, for staying on. with us. <laughs> um, um, no, but of course, if there would be like uh, another question from, from the audience, happy to take that. Um, yeah. If not, also happy to, to ground it up. Yeah, I think so. You, Juliana, you mentioned you're, you're obviously in the final closing, super busy the next uh, two days. Hope, uh, uh, wish, we wish you best of luck. If people want to still get in touch with you, any LPs or startups or founders, how, what's the best way to get in touch with you? In this circle, I think you can just email me. Uh, LinkedIn is a bit noisy usually. So it's just contact me, uh, Juliana, at signatureventures.com. And uh, please have an understanding that I will be very selective over the next days, <laughs> but I will for sure reply after the final closing latest. And if there's really um, an investment interest, then please mention it in the headline. Other than that, it might I'm, it might drown uh, in the momentary struggle with all the sub docs coming in. Well, uh, if anybody wants to invest, they can also always talk to us. Obviously, um, we are more than happy um, to tell them uh, and everyone who wants to learn more about AQVC uh, more. Um, and yeah, if uh, there are any other funds listing in, any other emerging managers or established managers, please also always reach out to us uh, to uh, onboarding at aqvc.com. So uh, we are also always looking to talk to to more funds um, and getting to know you. Uh, and so with this, I think big thank you, Juliane and Alena uh, for, for doing this and uh, looking forward to the next, next iteration of this. Hopefully in a year time, Juliana, we can do a, we can do a follow on and then, um, you know, let's see what happened in the portfolio. We are extremely excited. Me too, actually. <laughs> thank you very much for having me today. Thank, Thank you, you guys. Take Have care. a good rest of the week. Bye. You too. Thank you. Bye-bye.